Dunch Bags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here and it is time for a review of the newest EP from Dion Timmer. This one is called Textasy and I'm here with Dion Timmer, the man himself. How's it going, man? Pretty good. How are you doing, man? Great, great. You're just, uh, we were just conversing a second ago here and I guess Dion's here uh, over in LA for a couple different shows on the Paradox Tour with yeah. Excision. So that's exciting, and we just decided to uh, sit down and do a little review of his EP, which I've been planning on doing since before it even dropped. I think you had sent me that, uh, yeah, I sent like, you like that. a week before or that something promos. like that. Yeah. Yes. So I had listened to it. I was super stoked about the content on it, and I, I had planned on doing a review. And then when it actually released, I was like, hey, maybe let's link up and do a collab review at some point. Uh, so here we are, like, I don't know, a month and a half after it's released Damn, or something. Yeah. But still super exciting because I actually really love this EP. I'm super stoked about it. And this is your, I think, fourth EP to date? Something you like had that. the It's either yeah. the third or the fourth. It's the third on Rotten, but it's the, I think, the, the fourth, fourth official, overall. Yeah. yeah. Cause you had that aggression. Yeah, EP that was on, before on Squirrel, I like, like a found my ago. sound. I mean, yeah. I, I consider Plug Me In as like my first ever EP. That's mm -hmm. like my sound. Like before that, it's just like experimental stuff, you know, like mm -hmm. really heavy dubstep shit. I guess mm -hmm. just trying to find my own sound. But no, I was gonna, I was gonna make a comment at some point because it, it, it's interesting. You're from the the Netherlands, yes. yet, uh, and and that's a big area for like house music like it's been kind of the central central of house for a really long time and yet like your your beginnings as a music producer was all like that the hard-hitting heavy bro step stuff so kind of where did that inspiration come from for you well it was back when there was this dubstep wave in like 2011 2012 people were like putting them in the in their uh, gaming videos you know the call yeah. of duty like like those Sick montages and everything. <laughs> Call of Duty montage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was watching that and, like, I heard this Bare Noise song and I was like, shit, what's this? I looked it up and I found UKF Dubstep and that's how, like, I kind of got the ball rolling. I was, like, 12 at the time. That's and crazy. around that time, I was like, ah, oh, I could probably try and make this because I was bored. I was, like, doing school. I didn't really play games anymore, mm -hmm. so just started doing that, I guess. That's how it started. And you were you were how old when you signed your first record contract? I signed this goofy ass record deal with this weird label when I was like fourteen, I think, something like that. That's nuts. Thirteen, That's fourteen. Insane. It's funny. <laughs> That's still crazy though. Like, how how old were you when you signed uh, Panic to Monster Cat? Uh, either sixteen or seventeen. That's yeah. still that's still pretty crazy. Like like I said, kind of uh, growing up in that like, uh, how close are you to Amsterdam? Like pretty. Well, my dad lives about fifteen minutes from Amsterdam. My okay. mom lives like an hour and a half. So you grew but... up with a lot of that house music, kind of Euro dance stuff. Yeah. As a okay. for sure, yeah, I grew up with all those okay. ravey music, you know, mm -hmm. the happy hardcore uh, stuff. It's really hot in our country i think i've always least. really noticed that like reflecting in your in your sound and i, I had asked you about it at one point i forget wh what it was in regards to it might have been lost but uh yeah. kind of the the neon sound that you're going Definitely, for yes. I, I feel like a lot of that's really rooted into like that that happy hardcore and like euro dance kind of sounds like the pitched Definitely. up vocals the really yes. like driving energetic synths a lot of that is reflected in your music but yet um a lot of the times you tend to blend that with like trap elements and and bro step and things like that and it's always been really cool I've, I've loved your stuff for the, over the last couple of years especially I feel like you've seen a ton of progression as an artist like just even in the last year or so and I, I feel like that's definitely going into this EP so like I said a lot a lot of um, your childhood and kind of your influences seem to be growing up with a little bit of house music and now this EP like it, it's not necessarily a house EP because the first track uh -huh. and the last track are, are house songs obviously um, Probably the first one, uh, Text to See, the title track, is probably taking... It's a little bit more of a, of a general house sound than Cyan, which I, I thought was yeah. like a really kind of different... Uh, different take on house music so because it's uh, you've got the first and the last track that are going into that house music sound I feel like in a way this EP is is a little bit mass like it's a house EP but it's definitely not because you've got three yeah. pretty pretty hard-hitting like dubstep songs on this as well what one big question I wanted to ask in regards to this EP is kind of the theme you're going for besides just bringing house music more than you ever have before because I know on um, 
on one of your previous EPs. I think it was the last one. Uh, My World, yeah, My you, had, World you had a house group. track on that as yes. well. Uh, yeah, the, the title track on that one was House yeah. 2. And, but, but this one, uh, I'd say the house tracks have a little bit more of a clubby, clubby sound to them. That, that one kind of had like a main stage. Yeah, the My World tune kind of. was like, I, I make house stuff all the time. And like sometimes I have this tune where it's like slightly different than everything else, mm -hmm. like the My World song. I mean, it sounds like main stage house, mm -hmm. but it's like it has that slight sound to it, you know, that slight oh, yeah. Dion Timmer sound, I guess. And I was oh, yeah. like, all right, I'll put this on the EP. Same with Texasy. I was like, this sounds like me, but it sounds different, you know? It's, oh, yeah. Yeah, it has his own sound. Yeah, it's so got, it's got those, it, like I said, the same, like, pitched up vocals, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. like, repetitive sampling, everything. It, it does sound like it's rooted into your stuff, but it's really freaking good. Like, <laughs> I'm really <laughs> happy with the result of the, the house music on this. Um, really, ultimately, I think I like all of the songs in this EP, like, a lot. Um, which which generally doesn't happen with uh, when it comes to like EPs that are primarily uh, yeah. just bangers, you know. Like, um, yeah, I think the last time I remembered really loving a project that was like all straight bangers was like Barely Alive's "We Are Barely Alive" LP. Oh, that, that came out a, a couple LP. years ago. Yeah, I, I I really loved that one. But um, this EP is definitely up there too, and it's not it's not because like. Generally, when I'm enjoying dubstep a ton, it's going to be when it's like super experimental, like sound designs, like crazy, nothing you ever heard before yeah. kind of stuff. Um, this EP doesn't really stretch that far into that vein, but you also oh, do no, a very good not. job in what, what you try to accomplish in this. Um, yeah, what I tell try you to do with this EP instead of like going like for the crazy sound design, yeah. I, went go, I went for the crazy vibe, you know? Like yeah. every tune has to have its own vibe. For sure. Oh, absolutely. Once we go track by track, I'll explain like the vibe I tried to hit mm -hmm. for that. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, let's talk about "Tell You Why." Yes. Uh, so that that's one of my. I think I had I had seen you posted like a preview of your your Lost Land set, and that was the the track that was in the preview. Yeah. I really love this one. Um, the drop kind of reminds me of that uh, "Need Your Heart" 2.0 first drop yeah. you did with Adventure Club, and that one reminded me a lot of. I think it was "Swipe My Swords" by the Frim kind of oh, the sound yeah. you're going for in the drop. Yes. So it it, it feels. So it, it feels like that remix was kind of inspired by that, and this was kind of from that remix so it doesn't sound a ton it doesn't end up sounding a ton like swipe my swords but it's got got some similarities there in the drop yes. um just a lot of energy you said you wanted to talk about the kind of vibe you were going for with this song yeah I'll tell you why i mean i found the vocal years ago really and i was like i'm gonna make something with this so there's like three demos that sound completely different that i've made over the years but this time i made like this kind of cool intro and I didn't have, didn't have a vocal yet so I was yeah. like all right I'm gonna try and put that vocal in there I know Dr. Ozzy used it before like recently too and I was like I found it out afterwards I was like shit but I mean whatever um the intro um definitely I tried to hit that subscape dubstep vibe you know subscape like the old school dubstep like square yeah. intros it's it's yeah. it sounds a really cool vibe I tried yeah, to hit saying. that and mix it with the the rhythm stuff that's hot right now mm -hmm. I was like, gotta make something hard that I yeah. could probably use for like an intro or something. Oh, that's what I did for Lost Land, so yeah. You use that for your intro for Lost Land? Yes. That's yes. dope. Super yes. dope. I also wanted to talk about uh, Berserk kind of a, a little bit more in depth. Um, that that yeah. was like, I think the biggest single off of this one, at least before it dropped. And it was on the uh, Lost Land's... Compilation, like compilation yeah yeah, yeah i oh god i love this song so much and it took me a little while to kind of vibe with this one um mm -hmm. i'm not really a huge rhythm person and I, i've talked about this in my reviews and everything there's only been a few like rhythm songs i've really been crazy about but one thing i really like um that i think rhythm works really nicely with is when people kind of combine it with hip-hop like one of my yeah. favorite tracks one of my favorite dubstep tracks of last year was that uh, ivory and virus syndicate uh, 93 style 93 style definitely yeah, that that was a that was a huge banger i was a big fan of that even if it got it gets a little little bit repetitive but um i think i think hip-hop is a huge thing that can kind of combine with rhythm to really sound great and i i love how you kind of accomplish that with this track it's got like a little bit of a like 90s hip-hop instrumental yeah, kind of with the intro 90, yeah. it's super cool yeah that's what i, I did I, I mean i think i made the drop first 
and I made this like really like swaggy pattern, you know. It's mm-hmm. like slightly like yeah, offbeat kind of like yeah crazy. And the intro I made in a different project. It was like this West Coast style beat, and I had my buddy Mac Mac do vocals for it. And I like cause I like it cause it's like it's not American rap. It's grime, like UK grime. And yeah. I feel like that's like slightly different than everyone else is doing right now. Oh so. yeah, it does. I was definitely getting like a little bit of a UK vibe, especially yeah. s- since you got Mag Mag on that. But uh, yeah, super cool song. Like I like I said, the rhythm is one of those genres that I feel like without, with exception to just producers with absolutely crazy sound design like Chibs mm-hmm. or someone like that who who's just taking that style and just going absolutely off the wall with the sound design i i don't think rhythm is particularly a genre that that has a lot of creative outlets but i really love how you were able to kind of infuse that that um, yeah, 90s man. like hip-hop sound with that so that was really cool um i also really liked how mag mag's verse kind of went into that uh hoods up what was the kind of uh, vibe you were going with that well that, that one has a special story to it because last paradox tour we were um in Orlando I think yeah we're in Orlando and we had a couple days off me and Excision so we decided to make a tune in the hotel room so we brought our KRK monitors from the bus all the way up to my hotel room we had to like turn the sub all the way down oh, with geez. an EQ on the master so that people wouldn't start like bugging us you know like yeah. this shit's too loud it's shaking my walls <laughs> <laughs> so we started That's making funny. it and it started out as like a DJ tool because you know the drop mm-hmm. is like it's weird Oh yeah. Like, it still hits oh, yeah. like it's like a build up inside a drop into mm-hmm. another drop. That's what we tried to do. We were like we gotta make something that like the crowd will love. Yeah. We premiered it in Atlanta last year and people just loved it. Just generally speaking, this is probably my least favorite song on the EP, but that's yeah. not, not to say it's still not good because I really like uh, all the tunes on this. I like you kind of said it's it's a drop within a drop you kind of got the the start of it where it's got the wonch wonch Mm -hmm. it's kind of like a fake drop I guess and then it goes in it has a couple different beat changes that I thought were really cool throughout it and uh, yeah I really like that Um, Messinian's not one who I've ever thought like had any mind-blowing like hip-hop lyrics or anything like I if it came down to Hip hop versus, I'd probably prefer Mag Mag's I feel uh, appearance over Messinian, and he, he he's a little bit he's good though in regards to um, just having that kind of deep voice that's really good for like the the one liner phrases and that, yes, that kind of comes out in this song. I thought it was interesting because obviously Excision did that that song uh, X Up a couple of years ago, so and Messinian was on that track as well, let me see you throw your X up. Yeah, then, yeah, before uh, that, there's been a couple tunes, like the yeah. X-rated tune, you know, mm-hmm. back in the day, Messinian's always been like, at least on one tune on, on every Excision Records for sure. Mm-hmm. Mo- moving on from that track, we've got Cyan, which is one of the more interesting cuts here. It's got, uh, it's got that sound during the drop that I have really never really heard in house music, it's kind of mm-hmm. like the bloop, bloop, bloop. It's weird. Um, so I had, like, three years ago, I had this weird, like, Reesey, almost breakbeat, garage demo. Yeah. It was really chill. So I sent that to the Arcturians, which is a group, and they did vocals as well. They do amazing production as well. But for this one, we did the, only the vocal feature for us, for me. Um, uh, yeah, they did vocals for that chill tune, and I was like, ah, oh, this is pretty sick. But I didn't really, like fit the vibe I was going for, I think. So I made a different instrumental for for the vocals they sent me. And it's like this r- really weird housey four on the floor tune. Mm-hmm. And I was like, these vocals don't fit that instrumental either. So I got vocals, different vocals for that instrumental. <laughs> and that ended up being Till I Make It, which is oh, weird. Really? It's like crazy, you know? Oh yeah, that, that is really weird. Yeah, I yeah. know. Till, Till I Make It did have kind of like a housey undertone yeah, to it, yeah. like that deep bass. So that so makes if you sense. Put the, oh, that's if funny. you put the Cyan a cappella over Till I Make It, it sounds perfectly fine. It sounds like it's made for it. That's crazy. So that's, that's weird, right? That's so really cool. That, yeah, I, I had like, no right. idea about that. That's yeah. really cool. So I got, I still had those vocals and I made this um, housey drop, you know, like the, the mm-hmm. weird Cyan drop. And I was like, yeah, this definitely like is something I could use those vocals for. Yeah. 
So I went yeah, for the vintage cool. intro, like it sounds like it's from like the 70s, 60s, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely, and, and you had a little bit of that in Till I Make It as well, I, yeah. I noticed, because you got the kind of... The vinyl <laughs> drums yeah. and vinyl, yeah, definitely. It's kind of a, a little bit lo-fi sounding even, like yeah. toward the beginning. So I, I guess, I, yeah. That's one thing that kind of confused me in the end about Cyan is because the, the vocals are mixed back like they, they're kind of supposed to be there too. It's a Sounds little like bit a muffled, radio. a little bit, yeah, radio kind of vinyl sound. So that, that's part of the track that it was like, it, it's really hard for me to focus on what Kayla's saying just because it, it's mixed that way, but it doesn't yeah. necessarily ruin the track either. I think in general, I think Kayla's a, a great vocalist when it comes She's to house great, music. Yeah. I've really loved... Uh, stuff she's done in the past. Uh, Here for you by Pixel. That was one that I, I really liked that mm -hmm. she did kind of housey vocals on. I think it, it really works for adding like a little bit of a pop flavor to a house sound. So, yeah, honestly, <laughs> that's everything, man. Like th this EP just rounded out really nicely, and it's not necessarily because you're going for a particular theme overall. Like I said in the beginning of this video, you you've kind of focused more in on putting house music on this EP, but it's also not the center of it. And you really go for like, you don't have a single track on this that's like, oh, it sounds like that other track on the EP. Like no, everything brings you. its own, yeah, distinct flavor um, throughout it. And and while it's not like super thematic, like I actually, I didn't mention in this uh, review yet, but I really like the intro on Text to See when you have like the little keyboard yes. clicking sounds. Yeah. I um, kind of listening through this the first time I thought, that kind of theme was going to be a little bit more like prevalent uh, in, in the entire EP, but it turns out like, honestly, this EP rounds out a little bit more like single after single after single than it does like a, a straight conceptual project or something like that. But regardless, it's a really great collection of music and one of, one of my favorite EPs to come out of the, the dubstep world in the last, last couple of years even. Um, I, I recently did, I think it was in December, I did my, my top 10 EPs of 2017 video. And because of the way I organize, I don't include December releases and I include them oh, in yeah. the following year. Absolutely. So th this EP is definitely like a strong contender for top 10 EPs of 2018. I even had some comments. Yeah. <laughs> I even scary. had some comments on that video that were like, where's text to see? It was so Damn, good. And it's like, dope. it's like, I've got a big plan for that one. Don't worry. But yeah, yeah I, I really liked how this, this EP rounded out. Like can't stress that enough. Really in all honesty there's there's something i really love in every single track on this ep even if there were there were some moments that felt a little bit awkward to me on you know hoods up and cyan I but in the end it, it does round out very nicely i'm probably feeling like a solid uh strong eight to like a light 8.5 on oh, this ep I, i'm really like a huge fan of this and once again thank you for joining me for this i felt like yeah, you gave course, a, a ton of insight into this and i can't wait to put this up on my channel i think the Hell fans yeah, are gonna man. love it too so if you guys would like to check out this ep for yourselves which i would strongly suggest you do i have the spotify link down in the description below and if you have listened to this ep already which you probably should have by now considering it's been out for like uh, over a month now about every uh, years man <laughs> yeah <laughs> Vintage. Just uh, just let me know what you think down in, down in the comments section about it. Uh, special thanks to Dion Timmer for featuring on this. This was a this was a great interview, great, great review. Really hyped to put it up. Definitely. Uh, I'm Landon Remixes. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Mm -hmm.